This video will demonstrate creating quizzes. Now before we get started, I do want to point out that quiz is just the name of the tool. The quiz tool can be used for things like exams, other graded assessments. It doesn't have to be just for a quiz. Now the icons at the bottom, like here you can see on my cat food assignment, shows the word assignment. On the quiz, this will show the word quiz. Um, that could potentially be a little bit deceptive to students thinking that they're perhaps going in to take an exam and it says quiz underneath of it. So you may want to let students know that, that the quiz is just the name of the tool. So I'm going to pick a module. Uh, we'll just stay in this cat food module and I'm going to go to upload create. And from this menu, I'm going to say new quiz. So I'll click on that. I'll enter a title for my quiz. We'll just call this the cat food quiz. I can add any instructions here that I need to. I do see some instructors add these instructions, um, some add description. It really depends on your preference. Um, we'll go ahead and just put, please answer the following questions. But uh, maybe a good thing to put here would be how many questions are on the quiz, the time limit. They're all they're going to see all that information here um, on the page where they go into take the quiz. But sometimes it's nice to just put it here so they have an idea what to expect. And then I'm going to click publish. And we've seen this page before. This is very similar to the pages that we've seen on discussions and assignments. There's a couple different small. Uh, settings we can set up here. First one, we can set our dates and restrictions. Again, we can set the start date, due date, and end date here for this quiz. Um, here again is my descriptions that I put in or my instructions. I can put in further instructions up here and I will show you in a minute what displays and what doesn't. Um, and then I've got a couple options down here. Attempts allowed one, calculation type highest attempt. Um, I have a few other options there for the I can do lowest attempt, average, first, last. If there's one, obviously it doesn't really make a difference, but again, we'll come back to these settings. I can also add a grade item over here um, if I want to, but again, we're gonna come back to that. Where well, you're gonna find the majority of your settings and the more advanced settings is by clicking on here where it says quiz setup. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Okay, and this is where I'm really going to customize this quiz. So our first tab here is our properties tab. And the first thing we see is the name. Uh, there is an option here for category. Note this is not grade category. This is the category for the quizzes page. Now students don't generally see the quizzes page. They'd have to be pretty, pretty stealth with their um, detective work to really get to the page. Um, so it's unlikely they're going to get to the page. So you can categorize them on the quizzes page, but most of the time instructors just leave that as no category. Um, the next area here is add edit questions. We're going to actually come back to that. And um, so let's keep scrolling down. And here we've got the description and the introduction. So notice I put that description in on the first page. It's going to show here. By default, this may be off. So you may want to make sure this is turned on. There's also an option to add an introduction. There's also options to add page headers and page footers. And without going into too much detail where they all go, um, I'd suggest just kind of doing like a guess and test. I can tell you that the description will show right on the, the main page for students um, on the course content page. So that's usually a pretty good place. When the students try to open up the quiz, that's when they'll see the introduction, page header, page footer, etc. Um, by default, like I said, those are going to be off. If you want to add those then, you can kind of play around and see where the text goes on what page then for the students and add those if needed. Um, other things down here, there are some optional advanced properties. There's an option to allow hints. You can actually create hints when you put in the questions. You can disable right click for security purposes. Um, there's another option here. If you turn on this option, users cannot access the email tool, instant message tool, or their alerts if they have a quiz attempt in progress. What we see happen with this setting commonly is if a student is taking a very low stakes quiz, uh, they may start it and then they may, you know, go wander off, have dinner, you know, decide they're going to finish it later, log back into Talon, try to send an email to their instructor, and they're going to get this really big, ugly looking error that says they don't have access to their email or instant message tool. 
because the setting is on, since you'll notice the setting is on by default. So if you do have a very low stakes quiz here, I would suggest unchecking this box. There's also an option down here for notification email. You can enter your email address in here and what it will do is send you an email as soon as, as, soon as the student submits. All right, we're gonna scroll back up. Let's go to the restrictions tab. Okay, then um, we wanna make sure that this quiz status is set to active. Again, here I can set my start and end dates. Notice I can't set a due date on here. I can only do that from that uh, course content page but I can put this, uh, these dates in the calendar, or at least the end date in the calendar. Um, release conditions, those are more advanced. Um, for those of you that are teaching classes where you're gonna have your exams online, you may wanna enter a password here. You can do this here. This may be optional advanced restrictions, may be currently collapsed. You may have to click this button to expand it. Generally, you're not gonna put an IP range in. That would be, I think, the only use case for that would be if you're doing it in one particular room or computer lab and you know all the IP addresses for those computers. Um, timing, you can set a time limit, enforce the time limit, or not. You can set a time, no time limit, but it's still gonna make you put in a suggested time limit just so students have an idea how long it should take. Now note you put in the time limit and then the grace period. Basically after the time limit is up, you can offer them a little grace period and then after that time, you decide what happens. So you can choose the first one, quiz is flagged as late, but student can continue working. The problem with this is then it's really not enforcing the time limit. Um, the second one here is probably the one we see the most commonly. Quiz is flagged as late, but student is prevented from making further changes. So after 100, 20 minutes and after the five minute grace period, the student can only submit. They're not able to do anything else on that quiz. Um, they can click the submit button, but like I said, that is it. The last option, student is flagged as late, but continue working. Um, they can continue working, but the, the quiz will automatically be scored as a zero. And then lastly, down here, special access. Uh, this is actually very commonly used with the quizzes, especially for students that need extra time accommodations. So you'll always wanna make sure you keep this first one selected, allow selected users special access to the quiz. And if you do need to add special access to, for a student's quiz, you can click on this add users to special access and adjust the settings there. Um, if you do choose the second one, that will allow only the one student or those few students that you set special access for to access the quiz that may be used if you're reopening a quiz just for one particular student. But generally you just choose the first one here, leave this set by default and just add those users to special access. All right, and then next is the assessment tab, and this is where we're gonna add the grade item. Now there are two check boxes here that are really important. So if you have a quiz that is mostly multiple choice type questions, you're gonna wanna make sure this first one is checked. This is the auto grade option. If this isn't checked, it's not going to auto grade. Um, here I'm gonna set a grade item then, and then I'm gonna click on I'm gonna go ahead and click on add grade item since I don't have one. So this is called the cat food quiz. And this is uh, the category for the grade book. I'll just go ahead and put that under assignments. I'll say it's worth 10 points. And we'll just go ahead and save that. And now I'm gonna get this other option. This is the other important checkbox, allow automatic export to grades. So a lot of times we get questions that um, students have gone in and taken an exam and they, it doesn't appear in the grade book. A lot of times the culprit is that this box was not checked. So the students took it, it auto graded, but it didn't actually send it to the grade book. So you always wanna make sure that it goes in and you go in and you check to make sure these both of these check boxes are checked. You can add a rubric to the overall quiz. Uh, you can set the amount of attempts. Like I said, I showed you that before. And then we'll skip over the objectives tab. The really important tab that is many times missed is the submission views tab. And this is what the students see after they submit. So right after a student submits, they're not gonna see anything except their score by default, unless you go in and change this. So you can change it two different ways. You can click on where it says default view, or you can click on where it says add additional view. I'm gonna go ahead and click on where it says default view. And you can change this if you want, um, the message that they see after they submit. 
And then you can decide what you want students to see. Uh, this cat food quiz is a very low stakes quiz, so I'm gonna go ahead and allow them to see all the questions. I'm gonna go ahead and allow them to see um, all the answers. And I can show, I'm happy to show the attempt score and the overall attempt score. But you can really customize this so they don't see anything. And I'll save that. Um, the other option is to add additional views. The big thing with adding additional views, if you click on that, is that is allow you to customize the date that the review starts. So you can set the date of review to start after all the students have taken it after a particular date. Um, you can also set limit the amount of time in minutes which this view is available after the quiz is submitted. So if you want students to be able to review their quiz while they're still maybe in the test center, you can set it so that you know maybe they're only in there for 10 minutes afterwards. Okay, so I've now set up my quiz with all the appropriate settings.